Hi, and welcome back. This micro lecture is on power. As always, you need three or more bullet points worth of notes, so one to two sentence summary, and your follow-up questions on Google Forms. All right, before we get started with kind of the more formal part, let's think about this scenario. Two guys are lifting weights. Both of them, let's say, are lifting these 20-pound dumbbells, um, so two of them. And guy A, uh, he's been working out a bit, so he lifts them in one second. Not a big deal, just does one rep, knocks it out, he's good. Guy B, though, he tries and he starts to struggle. He's like lifting, he's really trying, he's really trying, and then he finally lifts them up. And it takes him 30 seconds to do so. So you may not believe me, but just trust me that they do the same amount of work. But the question is, who is stronger in this scenario? Um, if you think about it for a second, clearly guy A, significantly stronger than guy B if he's able to get um, this dumbbell uh, lifted in much shorter amounts of time. Well, in physics, we think of this idea of strength uh, required to accomplish a task as the amount of power. Now, if you really wanted to get technical, you could assume maybe guy B is just trying to make guy A look good, and so he's like pretending to struggle, whatever. Um, the power required for how he lifted it is different than the power required for how person A lifted it. So this idea of strength to accomplish a task is called power in physics. Now the unofficial definition of power is how fast work is done. Uh, that's not the most official or best way to say it. Um, so the more official way to say it is power is the amount of work per unit time, which essentially we kind of consider how fast things happen. Um, the kind of rate at which they happen, uh, which is usually a time rate. Now, another way to think about it, and this is an unofficial way, is since work is a change in energy, that would mean that power would be the change in energy per time. Since if it's work per time and work is change in energy, then that's the same thing. And honestly, this is probably going to be a much better way to think about power. However, it's not the official way to define it, so please don't write that on tests. Uh, but especially if you go into IB, begin thinking about power as change in energy over time, and really just think about work as a change in energy. And that will help you in a lot of different problems. So that leads us to the official definition. Uh, the variable for power is P. It's a capital P. The units are watts. I know that means we have three W's, uh, W for weight, a W for work, and a W in the units, not the variable, for watts. Uh, but you've seen this variable before. You've seen these units before, sorry. Uh, speakers are often measured their power in watts. Uh, microwaves, refrigerators, all of it's usually measured in watts. And uh, power is calculated by work divided by time. And since energy is a scalar, this uh, rate or this value for power is also going to be a scalar. Now, like I said before, I often find it very useful to think about power as change in energy over time, or change in energy divided by change in time. You'll never see this equation written out this way, but if you can memorize it, this is probably better for you to think of it this way. Um, in fact, it's okay if you write this out as your equation when solving problems. Uh, both uh, All of the physics teachers here at Sequoia will accept it. That's it for this one. Three or more bullet points worth of notes. So one to two sentence summary. And do your follow-up questions on Google Forms.